let's take a look at some link charts for the latest Brave New Coin article. So in general, Link checks all of the boxes for something that's continuously bullish and will continue to be bullish. I'll start by talking about the two most negative aspects or bearish aspects of the token. The first being that it's up 500% over the course of 2019. So the question in the back of my mind is how much more bullishness can a coin that's already up 500% last year have this year? Now, rationally, you'd say, well, probably not very much, but this isn't really a rational market. These aren't rational participants. None of this stuff makes any sense other than pure speculation. So this is more of a neutral, neutral to bear aspect for me. Although it's up 500%, you can't say, well, it can't go up another 500% because it might. You just don't know. So it's hard to actually take it this seriously and say, well, it's probably going to chill out and other stuff's going to pull up a little bit, gain some ground on Link. The difference between Link probably and a lot of these other projects is Link is actually doing stuff. You know, if you look at BNB, they have an exchange that's massive worldwide, obviously. Maker, DAI, huge portion of the DeFi landscape. Tezos, massive spec right now based on proof of stake on all the exchanges. Uh, ETH is just number two coin. It's got a bunch of stuff going for it. A lot of developer grassroots stuff. You may not agree with the politics and the governance, but you can't deny that. And a lot of this other stuff kind of has nothing going on. You know, ADA arguably has some proof of stake coming, but I'm just comparing this to, you know, what are the possible competitors here on a purely percentage gain perspective? And if you look at LTC, they don't have much going on either. BSV shouldn't exist. Uh, EOS, not much going on either. And the list goes on. IOTA should be delisted everywhere. So I'm thinking, what could possibly be at Link's heels here that could take advantage of this you know, massive disparity in percent gain other than BTC? And I, didn't, I just don't see anything in the near future to take that place. Now, probably the biggest negative aspect for me is the token supply. So Link has 1 billion tokens. Now, this is very important to understand for all projects, which is why I always try to figure out how much of the token supply that was generated in the token generation event or during the ICO, how much of that is actually in circulation. So in Link's case, technically, 100% of it's in circulation. There's no vestment, there's no lockup, there's no proof of stake, there's no proof of work. Well, there's proof of stake, but it's a little different. The staking node operators get the node rewards, theoretically. Uh, But currently, if Smart Contract Limited, which owns Link, wants to dump everything they own, they can do that. They can continue to do that. They can continue to drip it into the market. Regardless of how you feel about the people on the team, there's generally a cult-like following for Link. So regardless of that, the fact is that it's not locked up in a smart contract and this can continue to support the business, which is good. But from a price realistic perspective, this is a supply glut overhang that continues needs continue, continued monitoring. Because if you're not paying attention to who's selling on every pop and it's actually smart contract limited selling a million tokens every time price goes up, that's going to hamper price, obviously. It's going to be good long term. It's going to increase distribution and it's going to make them rich. But it's not. It's going to look weird when price continues to push all-time highs or tries to and gets pushed down by these large cells. I'm not saying that's happening now. It theoretically has happened in the past, but it's something to pay attention to. Now, if we go turbo mega bull stuff, which is honestly the rest of what I'm going to talk about, Chainlink has continued to, regardless of quality, quantity-wise, it continues to have these nodes, these oracles, which is essentially what Link is used for between on-chain and off-chain, between crypto and non-crypto, It's got Oracle, it's got Microsoft, it's got Google, it's all these partnerships in the works. They got stuff going on, you know, regardless of if any of that stuff will come to fruition for the chain itself. There's plenty of hype. There is an unlimited, unadulterated amount of hype going on right now. Uh, But what this chart is showing is just the number of nodes that have been added to the network since 
May last year and just more and more nodes. So to me, this just says more and more entities are using Chainlink for something or trying to use it or about to use it or they're an Oracle for something or they're for DeFi. You know, I don't need to understand the purpose of every node and they, they might serve no purpose at all. But just the fact that similar like hash rate, if we see more and more miners pouring in hash rate, that has to be bullish, has to be because they think price is going up. And if these node operators think Link's going to be around for a minute, they're going to just operate a node and continue to use those services. So if we look at transactions, which is the line here and average transaction values, which are the fill. Both have continued to rise since January of this year after sort of coming to this consolidation point. You know, they don't have a lot of transactions on Link. Their average transaction values aren't that high, but the fact that both are uptrending is a good thing. And there's clearly been an uptick recently. Most certainly price speculation is a part of this. It's hard to it's hard to actually tease apart what's price speculation, what's organic, especially when price is ballooning to all-time highs on, on BTC charts. The bottom line is you can't look at this and not be bullish. The same thing with NVT, which is inverse economic activity, and all uh, active addresses. So this is monthly values. Monthly active addresses are basically at an all-time high again. Massively bullish in a vacuum for anything. NVT has been rising since October. Not as bullish. You want that falling. You want that low on historic metrics. You can see it's sort of in the middle of the road here. So if this were flipped, you know, if NVT were at all-time high and active addresses were in the middle of the range, it'd be much more bearish. But seeing active addresses basically at all-time highs, super bullish, especially on a monthly average, you know, because active addresses can spike flash in the pan sort of stuff, spam on the network sort of stuff, but it's hard to maintain all-time highs unless there's some actual activity on the chain. Um, this actually mimics price pretty well as well. So that's pretty interesting. Now, if we look at GitHub metrics, again, very active on the GitHub. However, you want to slice that apple. Either you think commits are useless and pointless to pay attention to, or you love them and developer activity is great. You know, it's good. It's hard to say like the quantity of goodness or how bullish this actually is, but I just want to see a minimum amount of continued activity. Google Trends, similar to transactions per day, continues to rise. This is people how, asking Google, how do you buy Link? How do you sell Link? What is Link? Where do I get Link? Can I stake Link? Is, is Link proof, proof of work? That sort of thing. So this is specifically chain Link crypto, Google Trends, uh, which is the narrowest I could get it without pulling like chain link, you know, chain link fence, <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, so I'm pretty sure this is accurate. All right, let's look at technicals. Now I always look at the 50 and the 200, the green and the red line EMAs here, moving averages. I always look at the volume profile of the visible range, these horizontal bars here and volume. Now this is a 12 hour chart. So by uh, link doesn't have a lot of data, chart data in general. So you kind of have to dial down the time frame because if I were on the daily here, it doesn't really tell me much. But again, if you compare this to the active addresses, very qu clearly see this, uh, you know, W bat pattern or whatever you want to call it. Um, which to me again, echoes this idea that if active addresses continue to rise, price should continue to rise. As far as the moving averages, you know, had this golden cross and it's just been off to the races. It's been above the 50, above the 200. If it does pull back, you're looking at $3 prices based on the VPVR support, based on the 200 EMA support, based on the previous range high support zone at this point. Uh, volume, you can use this to look at four divergences. So if you're getting higher highs in price, lower highs in volume, that could be an issue for continuation. It typically means there's waning momentum. Can't really point to a specific divergence in this case. It's just sort of flat and ranging. So I think it looks good for more up. How much up is just a question of how much float is there in the market? How much supply is waiting to sell at all time high prices? You know, at five, at six, link at 10, you know, crazy stuff like that isn't impossible. <laughs> I'm not like, I don't even own link, but it went from 34 cents to nearly 450 in a matter of months. That's just how crazy things can get in crypto, you know? And if we look at all the same stuff for Link BTC, it's above the 200, it's above the cloud, it's above the VPVR stuff. If 
volume looks fine. I don't see any massive divergences here. If we look at like chart patterns, you're looking at an ascending triangle pointing to around 65,000 sat target. I haven't looked at it today, but the chart's a few days old at this point. Uh, it may have continued to range, but at the end of the day, that's, that's the target for the near term, 65,000 sats.